In the remote coastal fringes of northern Alaska, a brief window is opening. Winter's darkness is yielding to a sun that won't set for the next three months. As days lengthen, birds return, and life is given another chance. Eiders, traveling more than a thousand miles from wintering areas in the Pacific, are impatiently pushing north to breed. They follow the open water, the cracks in the sea ice. At the peak of their migration, hundreds of thousands can pass this point in a single day. Males are adorned in the bright colors of courtship. Females in colors that will hide their nests. Their success will be measured by the number of young they can produce before this seasonal window closes. The eiders won't be alone. Dozens of other species and millions of individual birds are coursing northward from distant parts of the globe, making their annual return to the lands where they were born. Coming to usher in a new generation in one of the most important Arctic wetlands in the world. After traveling great distances to Alaska's northernmost wetlands, the first order of business for most birds is finding a meal. Where there's water, there's food. And open water attracts a crowd. The Teshekpuk wetlands provide something for everyone. Birds can find food here regardless of how they feed or what they prefer to eat. Greater white-fronted geese work the exposed tundra to get at the nutritious roots of grasses and sedges. Stilt sandpipers and long-billed dowagers probe for invertebrates and pick last season's seeds released from the thawing ice. And Pacific loons pursue fish along the open edges of tundra ponds. The abundant food that birds find in these wetlands fuels the breeding season. For birds that arrived alone, that means it's time to find a mate. Standing about four inches tall and weighing no more than six nickels, this male semi-palmated sandpiper has flown from the northeast coast of South America to the very same territory he held last year. When you're a small bird trying to stand out in a vast windswept landscape, you need a strategy for attracting attention. The male semi-palmated sandpiper takes to the air He'll spend nearly four hours a day in flight, fluttering above the tundra, vocalizing a constant stream of gurgles and trills that advertise his presence. If this sandpiper is lucky, his mate from last year will find him and they'll nest again.
The male buff-breasted sandpiper is also small, but he has a completely different approach for attracting attention. Everything about his appearance resembles his surroundings, except one. Nothing stands out on this landscape like a brilliant flash of white. His relentless wing waving advertises his presence to passing females. He's flown all the way from Argentina to be here, to compete with other males that maintain territories immediately adjacent to his. If he's flashier than the others, maybe he'll get the first shot at finding a mate. When wing waving doesn't do the trick, he turns it up a notch. Maybe getting off the ground will get him noticed. His hard work appears to be paying off. A female has arrived on his territory. Turning his back to her, he preens his feathers enticing her to come closer. When she's close enough, the real show begins. The sound and appearance of his courtship display are meant to impress. She carefully inspects every detail until she's made her choice. Once they've mated, the relationship ends, and she departs to nest and raise their chicks alone. Shorebird nests are exquisite. Four eggs, perfectly arranged for incubation and heat retention. Camouflaged and tucked neatly into the vegetation, their appearance is what keeps them safe. From above, the bird and nest are a perfect match for their surroundings. When still, shorebirds like this Dunlin virtually disappear. If shorebirds are the masters of camouflage, tundra swans are the opposite. This couple used the same nest last year, but it needs some updating. The added height will provide a good vantage point to watch for predators that prowl the landscape. Birds of the Arctic aren't just faithful to their nests. Many are faithful to each other. These tundra swans are lifelong mates returning each year from the marshes of Chesapeake Bay to the very piece of tundra they have occupied for years. King eider pairs will often establish a nest in the female's place of birth. While she's producing eggs, her mate will remain close by, guarding her so she can feed and rest undisturbed. And long-tailed Jaegers spend 10 months at sea before reuniting each year on the tundra to nest and raise their chicks. Each species manages the breeding season differently, but the goal is always the same. In the case of this yellow-billed loon pair, 
The goal is to keep their two eggs safe and warm for the next four weeks. It's difficult to overstate the extent of wetlands on Alaska's Arctic coastal plain. Lakes, ponds, rivers, and wet meadows form a mosaic of tundra habitats that are irresistible to bird life. Located between the Brooks Range to the south and the Arctic Ocean to the north, the Arctic coastal plain stretches for hundreds of miles across northern Alaska underlain with permafrost and sitting less than 100 meters above sea level, the region is more water than land. The expansive wetlands concentrated around Teshekpuk Lake are especially productive for bird life, with some of the highest known densities of breeding shorebirds anywhere on Earth. Birds fan out across this landscape and nest here in astonishing numbers. The coastal plain provides vast tracts of undisturbed habitat and an abundance of food. Summer produces an explosion of insect life and plant growth. And 24 hours of daylight provides the opportunity to feed around the clock. The abundant resources fuel a short but rapid reproductive season drawing millions of birds from around the world year after year. Almost a month has passed, and patience is paying off at the lakeside nest of the yellow-billed loons. Being a good loon parent means providing a steady supply of fish that are just the right size for your finicky chick. Within days of hatching, loon chicks join their parents on the lake and begin a life spent almost entirely on or under the water. All across the tundra, the landscape is becoming a nursery for hungry baby birds. Shorebird chicks are on their own when it comes to food. Within hours of hatching, they begin to explore the tundra around their nest in search of their first meal. They won't stray too far at this point and still rely on their parents for warmth and protection. Most have only two months before they'll need to be strong enough to make their migration south. If one thing's for certain, it's that chicks born on Alaska's Arctic coastal plain have a long way to go. Greater white-fronted goose chicks will follow their parents to the coastal marshes of Texas and Louisiana. Brant will travel the Pacific coast to Mexico. American golden plovers, pectoral sandpipers, and buff-breasted sandpipers will spend their winters in Argentina and Uruguay. Red phalaropes and long-tailed Jaegers winter far at sea off the coasts of Peru and Chile.
Dunlin, red-throated and yellow-billed loons will return to the coasts of China, Japan, and Korea. And many other species will migrate to wintering areas across North America. But perhaps most remarkable are the bar-tailed godwits. Their chicks, just two months after hatching, will travel nearly the entire length of the Pacific Ocean on a non-stop 7,000-mile flight to New Zealand. While most of the U.S. is enjoying the last warm days of summer, the window for bird life is rapidly closing in the Arctic. Red phalaropes are gathering on the Arctic coast, preparing for the next nine months at sea. The last remaining family groups of geese are waiting for just the right winds to usher them south. And young Arctic terns are about to embark on a journey that, over their lifetime, can take them the equivalent distance of traveling to the moon and back. Yet, as they cross the globe, always on the wing in search of food, they'll never fail to return each year to this place. The birds born here, like their parents before them, will be forever devoted to this land. No matter what corners of the globe they may occupy or how far they may travel, it's these vast wetlands, their birthplace, that they'll always have in common. The place they'll return to year after year, retracing the very steps of their own birth, taking advantage of a brief window to usher in a new generation of life in the pristine expanse of America's Arctic.